Those are less than. There's, there's still vehicles that are, and it's a, it's a sliver out of those, small thing. But there are those out there. Um, I was trying to figure out how to keep things going so we don't get stuck in any problem. Sure. I mean, I understand that. Yeah, you know, that is my, I mean, I'm not sure I fully totally understand the constraints of whatever engineering is calling for. I'm not trying to do anything on a quick timeline, but you know, and, and to your point, I understand that they will give us something in the, in the first draft that we can work on. But if we're talking about developing like a full policy, now we're talking about not having a full policy until FY 2025 budget seems like a pretty kind of depressing idea that it was in 2022. If we're talking about three, three budget years down the road, you know, um, five years. You know, so that's what it's Yes, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's better than not doing anything. Um, but I'm kind of with the line. It's the same thing I think it was PJ. It's like, you know, what, what can we do to keep making progress? I guess, I guess one topic for discussion for the committee is do we. You know, do we want to wait until we have a full fleet evaluation and right sizing report in our hands before developing policy recommendations? Um, well, I think you know you have to transition. You know, yeah. yeah. Right size is not going to right size is going to tell you dollars, but it's not going to tell you policy. It's going to tell you dollars. It's going to tell you, you know, what that you use. I mean, uh, I'm on the same line. I tend to think like we can still develop a policy in general without the evaluation and right size study. Um, you know, the evaluation and right size study will affect your specifics of how many vehicles, what vehicles, what times, those kind of things. But as far as you know, are we? Are we setting a, a policy that you have to look for a collective vehicle first? And if there's no running vehicle, you look for either. Probably, you know, like those kind of things, I don't think I have to start independent of what a fleet study can tell you. Go back to something Jessica said. We should be, we had a conversation with the police department. And there's appetite for either electric or hybrid vehicle. Man, you don't have that on board. Yeah, that's true. Right. Well, that's part of the reason to do the pilot program is to be a large people that are interested and curious. And then you could experience first. Um, that would be experience that for a lot of each other. That would be the problem. And the pilot program is fairly, you know, a couple kinks to work out in a few months, but, you know, just the charging piece of the pie is the hard part. But, you know, demonstrating that people are on board early on. It makes it a lot easier. And I mean, we're we're probably going to be going somewhat slowly compared to other places around the state. But the EV adoption is going to be trickle, 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 and that's just going to shoot up as, as vehicles are available. And the, the charging infrastructure is a major, very limiting step. And so that's why it's so important to have a pilot program that shows a, a workable concept. But yeah, I mean, cops, I, I think half of them are going to love it and have to it for a while. But I mean, well, one of these things where we, we know we're going there, but we might as well get going. Yeah, that, that is where we're at. Yeah, I think to your point, it's one of those things where you tell a cop, hey, we want to take away your charger and give you an electric car. And I think cops are going to say, I don't want to do that. Until they drive until, until, until they car. say, hey, I can run down this, this guy, you know, I can run down this car in my Tesla three times faster than I can in exactly. the charger. And that's this hard, I think. The acceleration factor. Well, the other thing is they get new cars every few years as part of their, it's like a, you know, one of the benefits of their job is they get a new vehicle frequently. So that's 
going to be changing a little bit, right? So I'm just kind of get used to it. The, the charge of your going away. What are what's what are what are what are you what are you are you know, place them lined up for well the ones that I'm aware of are the uh oh, what do they call it? The Mustang. The Mustang. Oh, oh the SUV. The SUV. Um it's like a Ford Explorer, but it's a Paul and a Interceptor. I will say they have <laughs> Well, they make, they make that in a hybrid, and um, they've already ordered some uh, of that type for the police department. Those guys hate to sit somewhere in that air conditioning as well. That's, that's part of what I've heard of around the country, especially in March. EV air conditioning right now? Well, it's not the EVs, but like some of these hybrid ones, you know, when you sit there right by there. My Ford, my Ford hybrid AC stays on. Right, the engine okay. kicks off, and then, and then some of them, the, the air conditioning changes to the one that's all on too. That's so I, the way mine works. Mine's a 17. The way my Ford Fusion hybrid works is the engine does cut off, the AC keeps running, and then once the once it senses a change in the air, the engine kicks back on. So we, I think I think that's I think that's part of the the thing. We, we, an education right? you, need a, you need a varying age range and experience in that community, police, different demographics. And it needs it needs to be we are going here. We don't know when or how. We need your input. Yeah, you know, it's this is happening. You can be part of the process and the solution. You know, your input can be taken or you can come to kick me screen. You know, it's gonna happen. I think it may possibly have to take me down. Is this a big turnover year for cop cars, or is it? I know some years come slow, and all of a sudden they, they it's, it's a and they, usual they, year. They keep on longer than you think. Okay. I mean, they. I think we're just now rolling out. I mean, I don't think we have any more crown picks, <laughs> but we uh, might be a couple trucks. We do. We do have a couple of relics just for show. store for show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My marker is we used to have a, a paint scene that was just the car was white and yeah. blue stripes blue and now it's yeah. black and white and black and white. Mm -hmm. right. So you see one that's white and white, that's oh. the older yeah. charger version. Yeah. So, and to PD's credit, they they actually approached Dave about you know the EV not for a police car but for some of the mm -hmm. civil service. It was going to be a van. So if you're if you're you know, if you're talking super nuts, my just the initial thought on the top of my head would be you would want someone in the police department that is not a police officer doing something like crime scene or you know serving warrants or whatever, like something that does not involve high speed chases or the positive potential for it. Uh, you would want one police officer vehicle for pilot to, to get it get it in their heads that you know these things are perfectly capable of doing what they need to do, and at least one other city employee type, you know whatever it might be, just you know, driving around preaching with the word. <laughs> yeah, I would like to know what our total vehicle counts are. I'm not I'm not disagreeing with your philosophy, but we find out 60% of our vehicles are police vehicles. I think it's more like, isn't it like 600 cop cars? And no, it's 200. 600 vehicles. It's not like Dave sent that to us. Something like a third. Yeah, so I mean, I would just I would try to make sure that we try to proportionalize it appropriately. Is having one police or even a third of our cars is a very good message. Yeah, I think there's a couple of.
prohibit us from pursuing, you know, all that stuff. Correct. I mean, right. uh, again, this is, in my kind of overall simplistic view, this is what we're asking is for someone to help us draw a map that we can follow. We can we can take little side trips and do whatever we want. Independent of that, um, you know, I, I, you're right. We're, we're not going to buy a bunch of vehicles without the kind of charging system. I'm just saying it's a lot easier. Hey, we already have the charger there. Yeah. I think to you know, map wise, I think the first steps we look for are fleet evaluation and white sizing studies that go forward. At the same time, I'm trying to run pilot program. Um, you know, I don't know if you want the committee to continue trying to, us to continue trying to develop a policy, purchasing policy, um, or, or if you even want to, to create a purchasing policy, or if we should just tell you, yes, make a purchasing policy. You know, um, I think that's kind of the, the first steps in that roadmap. In my mind, you know. Yeah, I think uh, the overall is to tell us what we think of a uh, uh, vehicle purchasing policy is as a last thing to do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, we got all the policies from the other cities. You look at them. Yeah. So uh, what I'm what I'm hearing, I think some y'all could consider putting a new emotion is that we could extract. Potentially extract that portion out of what the consultant would do and try to do that sooner. Well, if I understand correctly, that the city right now, if they wanted to buy a vehicle, there's not a, there wasn't a way for them to even buy an electric vehicle, or it wasn't part of the decision making process. So, so there isn't an official. Written policy on how to go about doing it. There's practices that have been in place for quite some time. Um, traditionally, what happens is you know, the fleet manager will come to you as a director or department head and say, These are the vehicles that are part of your fleet that are up for replacement this year. And there, he's going to, in theory, work with you to determine. Does the same type of vehicle continue to meet your needs, or do you have something else, you know, that would you know, better suit your needs? Do you have another need, or did you have your service changed, and you need something different to do that? And at that point, the department head makes a decision that you know I'm going to replace light for light, or I'm going to replace this for something bigger, something smaller, something more fuel efficient, something that has four arms. Who knows what it is? You should prepare for pushback then, because I think what we're proposing is that you're basically taking that decision out of that department head's hands. Or at least you have to have a good argument to not go towards the right. right. You know, instead of saying, hey, what, what do you want? We're saying, hey, you're getting an electric vehicle, you know, or, or you're getting a, a hybrid, or, unless you have a valid argument as to why that will not suit your needs. The fleet manager full time position. Yeah. Meaning that we have we have a fleet manager, an assistant fleet manager, a couple of admin staff, and eight mechanics full time. Have they given any guidance for any of the stuff like the feedback personally? The probably the main thing that I've heard, well, yeah, he has. I think he would welcome the right side of the study. I mean he there have been bail attempts, you know. You only put 200 miles in your car last year. You really need to keep that in right. you know, there are attempts like that. Do my mechanics really need to take time out of their day servicing that vehicle that gets to a positive right. um, And he's also been uh, part of our discussions around uh, potential groups that could could be early adapters for you. So yes, he, he's been part of the council, not, not necessarily in the same context, but he knows that we're talking about this, this RFP. He's been helpful with trying to reach out and grab some other examples. So he, he's not, not a problem. No, 
One thought I'd have is, sure. but I will, I will say this: He's cautious, sure. and you know, his job is to make sure that he's delivering services so that we can deliver our services. Right. Right. And he's going to do that. Um, and ultimately, right. we've got to do that as an organization. Correct. But what I'm here is y'all. We got to set up a process of elimination. Is there an easy choice? Yes, no. Yeah. If yes, why wouldn't this work for you? Right. You know, kind of that decision tree. And I think I think as you guys are having those conversations with the fleet manager and making those decisions, I think one of the things that would even make it easier to make those decisions or present present in favor of me is if you can ask the fleet manager, you know, hey, do you have any numbers or can you get any numbers on with the cost? The cost, you know, we have the way that the vehicles are funded is they're, you know, they, we put that money aside. So when it's time to replace the vehicle, you know, we have 40 grand set aside. You know, if you can ask the fleet manager, is there a way you can tell us, you know, we have 40 grand set aside for a new F-150, whatever it is, you know, is there an equivalent EV that we can you know how much more is an equivalent to so you can get an idea of the price difference. If you can tell city council, hey, you know, we want to go to EVs, uh, and it's gonna cost us three thousand dollars more per vehicle, you know, versus if we want to go to EVs and we have 40 grand set aside for these vehicles right now and it costs 80 grand a piece, you know, just just so the more information you have about the cost ways even will help you be able to. Determine how that process. The, the metric that I've seen from his data sure. is most useful is is the cost to operate per mile. Yeah. Yes. And hands down, mm -hmm. the the, mm -hmm. the data shows us from what we have in our fleet, hybrids are anywhere from six maybe to eleven cents a mile, whereas you know equivalent. Another equipment vehicle serving the same purpose will be more than twice that. And that includes maintenance. Yes, yeah, I was just saying we have six mechanics. I don't know how much they do maintenance on larger vehicles. I have no idea. Tires, tires, and brake pads. Yeah, that's it. I was just saying when a sensor goes bad, um, they have the knowledge to replace it. We send it off. Yeah, so that was going down. Right. I didn't. I didn't want to bring that up, but I, I was concerned about that too. Is if your if your mechanics have the expertise, it's going to pose a challenge to them. And the fleet needs to pull that person that they seem that they're still able to service them if needed. I would assume as the industry progresses, their training will progress. For that. Oh yeah, and they they do a lot of training. Yeah, you know? and, and it's well known in the automotive industry right now that bringing down the cost. Combustion engines going out. Right. You figure out how to work on electrics, or you're going to be out of a job again in two years. You know, so I assume that they're already well ahead of that curve, but it's something to consider. There's this great public policy fleet procurement tool that you has all kinds of inputs into it that you were mentioning. And that'll, I don't know, helps you break it down. Uh, Thank you can make that bigger. Um, this is like there. Is that city I Charlotte? Uh, this is. This is one of the tools I think that they use. Um, but yeah, you know, all kinds of inputs, uh, you know, how much cash you have already set aside uh, for, for it. Um, and, you know, they've got various ty different types of F 150, like here's the, the F 150 Lightning, if you, if you want to compare it to like a regular F 150. Um, you know, put in various different types of vehicles, and it'll yeah. it'll break it down. If you bought this one here, you know, it'll be all the savings, greenhouse gas reduction, and that. So we do have some tools available to help with those discussions, arguments to provide. Just kind of wanted to share that one. So what are we voting on? So giddy up and go. Yeah. Get on the stage. Frankly, the station, get on. Well, I, I do think you all need to come to an agreement and craft and fairly not, not going to chase a rabbit down a hole here, but you need to basically come to an agreement and tell us what you, what you were advising us. Yeah. 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 Ye
I would, I would, I would say that we propose a motion to request a big evaluation and a right sizing study to add a provision in the budget request for a pilot to the pilot program, including infrastructure, um, and to. Maybe we can add something like start looking at the purchasing policy uh, as a, and how to, like, to transition clean energy or something like that. Something. Well, it sounds like the, the one thing they have to bet on is this yeah, fiscal year 24. Mm -hmm. are, are we agreeing? Wait, fiscal year 23 or 24? Right. It says 24 here, bro. No. Oh, I thought we wanted the money in the budget. Yes. Yeah, committee to vote to recommend the FY24 budget request item for three transition time. So, that's, so, that's, that's, so we are currently in, in FY23. FY yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, got it, got it, got it. Fine. Got it. Got it. Um, the other thing, this is, a, this, this is a small detail, but I'm thinking we should recommend at least two cop cars because sometimes what they're going to have to do is alternate. Like you're in the middle of a shift and you run out of charge, you got to go to the back. In my mind, those three things are going to be dictated by the results of that the fleet evaluation and my session stuff. So, wait, why do we have to worry about the grid? Not just a big energy problem. Mm, we would need to you know, do we need to add additional panels and kind of infrastructure on, again, uh, our side of the fence um, because of the whatever the infrastructure is. is in, the, the duke infrastructure is uh, let's, um, let's talk about our operations center. And we have a large number of vehicles out there. Do, do we need to upgrade anything inside of our I operations? Got you. I, I got you. Yeah. Okay. Because it's what you're doing for some line right yeah. To make that easy, isn't that something the duke can tell you? You know, if you say, hey, we're planning on X number of electric vehicles charging at a time, you know. Duke should be able to provide you the service of we provide you this much voltage in, this is the paneling that you have, and you need to X, Y, and Z. But I mean, I believe that's the information that Duke will provide you as so long as you give them parameters of what you want to provide. I don't think that the city should have to put in the legwork for that. I mean, you know, our, our Duke rep will tell us, you know, hey, you need X, Y, and Z if you're going to do service. And, and they, they, they did that very thing when we were looking at a pilot and share at the PD headquarters to look at how many chargers we were putting in. Sure. Yeah. So that, that should be something that I don't think should be later. Because, you know, that's a necessity. So is there 
is there a second for my motion, I guess? I got one question though. For the pilot project, do we not want to do that separate? So I'm going on this such a request. Um, well, we well, need to request the money for them to do it, right? Because they, they, they can't just. I'm just you know, if we're trying to get like a two cop car, which is what it should hopefully get it done before. Are you able? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's what I, that, I think that falls to Dave as far as what they're allowed to do and not allowed to do. You know, are you allowed to just go out and buy two electric cop cars to replace two of the ones that are up for renewal anyway? Or there's nothing to say that we can't. But your your rate, your um, street manager is not going to authorize them to do that. Us asking them to do that. Well, no. well, he's, cops the one he's, he's the one that wants to engineering opportunity. So I think so, it, it's the difference there that if it's in the if it's in the budget request, then there's going to be money set aside for it, but we have to wait for July. Versus if we just try and do it without a budget request, then it's just a matter of getting the fleet manager on board and being willing to do it. And we can do it earlier. And is that correct? No. Let me see if I can help. Sure. I'm not hearing any resistance that y'all have to the RFP in general. Right. So I, I would include in a suggested motion that the RFP be, excuse me, the same RFP, RFQ be a recommendation, standalone. Included in the same motion, you can also say that the city should pursue a pilot project. Recommending that it include at least two vehicles per department. Per, per, per charter. Sure. Charter. Um, and even separate from that, if y'all's discussion um, led to wanting us to try and pull the policy development out and try and do that on our own and even earlier than perhaps the rest of the that could be a third line of your motion. When you say policy development, you mean going you towards the purchasing, the purchasing policy. I think that sounds great. I agree. Which would allow us to potentially do the pilot earlier? Yeah. yeah. I think the bottom two bullets allow you to do those two things independently. Not waiting for each other. Right. If, okay. if, if we can pull that off. Right. I think so. I think that's the way to go. Is that your motion? That's no, my I motion. Second, I second the motion. Turns on the Supreme Court. <laughs> all right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Woo! Passed, y'all. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments, concerns, ambiguities? Motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Please. Someone <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> second.